Buenas tardes. ¿Cómo están? Oh my God, this is in English. Yes. And I started, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Anyways. Uh, how is everybody? Thank you so much for joining today to this uh, live show um, in Facebook. I, I'm sorry, I, you know, I had to switch the from Spanish to English, English to Spanish. And um, I don't know, I thought I was doing one in Spanish. <laughs> Tuesdays are in Spanish, Fridays are in English. So how is everybody? How is the weather treating you? It's sunny in here. It was very rainy yesterday. They are predicting rain over the weekend, but no, no. We need to pray to the girl, guy. We, do we know if it's a girl or a guy? In heaven, so no rain. No rain for me for the weekend. So I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I want to thank everybody who has joined, who is planning to join, and I want to remind you to like and share with uh, anybody you think can benefit from the information we provide here, and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a lot of videos that we've been doing to talk about my favorite subject, which is taxes. <laughs> Um, what else? Okay, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, which is how to build the perfect company. Yes, a perfect company. Is that something we can do? You know, maybe. But we're going to tell you how to approximate to that perfection so you can have a perfect company and you can be this perfect entrepreneur. Um, with all the secrets and all the um, all the knowledge that we can that we can share with you, like we always do every week in the live show, and also all this knowledge that we've been sharing in our YouTube videos. Um, so thanks for like again, thanks to, for sharing and thanks for joining on this beautiful Friday. Um, so. If you want to build a perfect company, we have a sequence of questions. Uh, if you want to ask a question or a comment, you can do it at the at the bottom of the of the slide, right, Nestor? Yes. I never know where. Gimara uh, already said hi. Hi, Gimara. She said hola. Hola. <laughs> hola. Uh, so. Um, so if we are going to, if we have to build the perfect company, I mean, number one, we always want to know, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Why do you want to have your own company? There's many reasons why somebody chooses the hard work of being an entrepreneur. And I would like to share all the knowledge about my um, ideas. I mean, it's not only my ideas. This is uh, recognized in many business books and Harvard Business Schools, and many other um, very authoritative um, publications that can tell you the same. Uh, also, my experience in the past 26 years that I've been in business on my own. As a matter of fact, I wish I had me 26 years ago when I decided to go in business, that I had me telling me this, that I am going to tell you guys, because I didn't, I didn't really think of that, and I have survived. The business has survived, but it's been, it's been hard. <laughs> it's been difficult, and I feel that if I am going to set up any other business, I will, I will do this. I will try to follow my own advice, because I have learned the way, the way I have learned everything in life, by trial and error. I think we all learn by trial and error. I think that's part of our experience. It's part of our journey in life. But we can also learn by the trial and error of others. We don't have to go through that. So this is what we want to do, what we want to share to prevent you from going through all the trials and tribulations that other entrepreneurs have gone for non for non following simple steps. So when somebody decides to go in business on their own, most of the time people 
go through this ana- you know to this analysis and they say well i am a fantastic chef does that mean i can have a restaurant i'm a very good lawyer so i can have a law firm i'm a fantastic doctor i can have a successful medical practice i am a incredible in construction or as a painter or a plumber or a florist and i think i can have my own company and you can but the fact that you can do something well the fact that you have the talent and the ability to do any task or labor or profession does not does not uh qualify you to be in business as i always tell everybody you got to have a really thick skin to be in business on your own because you are going to have to to experience a lot of uh, you know difficulties around around the around the road but if you prepare and if you follow certain um steps that we're going to tell you now you are going to be better so in our um in our chart we want to talk about planification okay how do you plan to be in business when people decide to be in business it cannot be emotional it cannot be like oh, i just want to have my own business you know you have to go through a planification because you would not go sailing with me if i tell you that i don't have a compass right it will be risky i mean it will be like oh, you're crazy you will not do that so i never understand why people go into business without sitting down and making a plan there are formal business plans that you can do which will be ideal but even if you don't have a formal business plan if you just sit with if you're going to do it on your own sit with somebody that you a mentor somebody that you trust and try to do a map because the business plan is what is going to guide you through the process is going to give you is going to strengthen your vision you know when you have when you when you want to set up a business you have a vision right? you say i'm going to have a vision and my vision is to become this this and that and my mission is this this and that but then if you put it in writing in my opinion when you put things in writing you kind of make a contract with the universe it's powerful to put things in writing so when you do a business plan and you put your goals and objectives in writing you have a guidance and you have something to follow so the business plan is like the skeleton or is like the map that would be a very analogy of what you want to do with your business so if you want to go in business on your own please try to make a business plan there are many uh governmental entities uh in the northern virginia uh washington dc area you have the counties arlington county has a fantastic have fantastic classes they are free classes that will help you and they will guide you on how to do a business plan they have a lot of coaching a lot of uh courses that you can take um uh, that will guide you and they will help you with your business planning they will help you with setting up uh entities they will help you with marketing they will help you with everything that you require in a business plan because in a business plan you need to have uh what do you want to do how are you going to do it you're going to have projections you're going to have um the how you going to execute the work so when you do a business plan you decide this is what i am going to do let's say i'm going to sell flowers for the sake of the example i'm going to sell coconut macaroons that was that was my first business coconut macaroons so when i was 11 years old so if i i didn't have a business plan then <laughs> so i <laughs> did not have a business plan so when i'm going to sell coconut macaroons i have to do my business plan and say okay i want to project that i am going to sell a hundred coconut macaroons on my first week in business and through those hundred coconut macaroons they i had to establish the cost right so how much it cost me to produce uh materials labor electricity everything that is in that is inherent to that 
production. And then once I have my final product, I'm gonna sell it and I'm gonna sell it at $5. So a hundred of, of, of those is gonna give me this much money and I have all these costs. So it's gonna have projections for me. And those projections are important because they help, they help you budget. And when you budget and you follow a budget, you have again an advantage versus somebody who is in business with no planning whatsoever and not, not knowing where the business is going. You see what I mean? So if you don't know where your business is going, you cannot improve, you cannot take measures. So planning is one, in my opinion, that's why we have it as number one, the most important aspect or the most important step that you have to follow so you can build that perfect company. So once we do our planning and we have our, you know, our compass, our guidance of where we want to go, you will need uh, to decide on what type of entity you're going to uh, create. Because you can do business on your own. You can have a business and be a sole proprietorship. But me being a tax attorney and being an attorney in general, I do not recommend for people to be a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is somebody who is in business on their own and you and the business are the same. When you want to set up a successful company, the perfect company that we've been talking about, you need to choose your entity of, your legal entity. So you can be a corporation, you can be an S corporation, you can be a limited liability company, you can be a partnership, uh, you can be a limited partnership. There are many legal structures in which you can conduct your business. As a tax attorney, I, I will give you advice on what entity is more advantageous uh, depending on your uh, business. Because for example, people love LLCs. Everybody wants to be an LLC. I always say that like people come to me and say, oh, I want to set up my own business, so I want to set up an LLC. And I'm like, why? Well, somebody told me it was really good to have an LLC. And yes, LLCs are very advantageous. They are hybrid entities that have all the advantages of a pass-through because and, and all the advantages of partnerships. But in my opinion, LLCs are more advantageous if depending of, of the business. So if you're going to be in real estate, acquiring real estate, uh, LLCs are perfect for that. But if you're going to be somebody doing business in, um, I don't know, any other, any other trade, and it's gonna be just you because LLCs are regulated under partnership laws. So ideally, if you wanna have an LLC, you need a partner. You have to have two or more people because the concept of a partnership or the definition of a partnership is the association of two or more people. So a lot of people that wanna go in business on their own <clears throat> want to have an LLC, but it's just them. So they go and set up a single member LLC which in my opinion does not give you the tax advantages that you could get by being maybe an S corporation. And now with the, with the current um, uh, tax reform that was passed on December 22nd, I feel it's better than ever to have a company, to own a company, and pass-through entities are getting a 20% deduction. <coughs> So to the owners, because pass-through entities as, as corporations and LLC, you know, the, the taxation goes through, that's why they're called pass-through entities, to the shareholders, which is the owners of a corporation, or the members, which are the owners of an LLC, for the sake of this example. So with the new legislation, I feel it's a good timing to have a pass-through entity. Because C corporations, you pay, you pay taxes at the corporate level, but again, with the new tax reform, we have less taxes because the tax rate went down from 35% to 21%. So sometimes, depend, um, depending on the business entity, it's better to be a C corporation, depending on the complexity, depending if you, you gross revenues, the number of uh, shareholders. So you need that legal, advising. You need to, um, you know, consult with the experts. You can consult with me. I am an expert. 
although, although I don't like saying I'm an expert because it sounds arrogant because I always say that nobody can be an expert in taxes because it's so complex, so vast that it will take a lot of years to become an expert. But I am very qualified, let's put it that way. Very close, I'm very close to being an expert. So if you need legal, legal advising, for the type of entity, preferably a tax attorney because a normal corporate attorney can advise you, perhaps can advise you on the entity formation, but will will not know, I mean, not always know, or maybe the counties when they give you advising and help you with your business plan, they will not know exactly on the difference from the tax point of view of different tax entities and what will be the impact of one or the other. So that's important to consider. Um, so once I know what my legal entity is, uh, you, I need to then, um, I decide what I am going to um, do. And I decide, have my business plan. Like I said before, you can go to the counties, Arlington, Prince William, Fairfax County, DC government, uh, Maryland, Montgomery County, they have fantastic resources. Do, do your homework and take advantage of those because they are free and they are going to help you understand the major points of having uh, your own business and having an enterprise and being a good entrepreneur. After we do that, we need to think on what is the next step. So we decided we're going to do an S corporation. Well, so what is the next thing that we need to be able to start operating? We need capital. We need to know, we need the money. We need the money, the funds, to be able to fund this enterprise that we decide to do. There are several ways you can start your own business because remember, that is going to be your working capital. So you can have savings. Maybe you've been working at this restaurant as a chef for many years and you decide, I want to have my own restaurant. So now I've been saving $100 every month since the, for the past 20 years, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully people save. And then that money will be your initial, work, initial working capital. So it's important to decide where the money is going to come from so you can start your business. You can also get a loan but to get a loan, you can get like what is called a small business loan for, from the SBA, Small Business Administration, or any bank. Most commercial banks, like the big banks, like Wells Fargo, I mean, I, mean, no, I don't want to say names, but any big bank or small bank will give you a loan, but they're going to ask you for a business plan. Again, we go back to the beginning. If you want, if you don't have savings to do your own funding for your business, you could get a loan, but the bank, the entity that's going to lend you the money is going to ask you for a business plan because they're, otherwise you're not going to get money unless you have a business plan. The other alternative is to have investors. You could have venture capitalists. You can have private investors and the requisite will be the same they're also going to ask you for a business plan because they want to know what your projections are. They want to know, number one, that you're serious, so you're going to have to have an entity formed. You're going to have to have a business plan because that's how the entity, either the investor or the bank, because most commercial banks can, can lend money through SBA, which is the Small Business Administration, and they have a lot of programs that are really, really good to fund new enterprises and when you do your business plan and when you're going to uh, present your business plan for SBA, if you show in your business plan that you are either preserving or generating new employment, that's a big one that they take in consideration when, when they are going to give you money it's because SBA wants to promote the small business and then it's very important that in your projections, in your business plan, you state that your new enterprise is going to generate three 
new employments this year and then the projections are going to be by year number five we're going to be generating 20 new employ um, positions job employment because that's important for the economy of the country and that is the mission of SBA so if you're going to get one of those loans having that uh, in your business plan will help but again you gotta have a business plan I said it before right yeah I did but I just want to emphasize the importance of having a business plan so invest uh, invest to private investors venture capitalists they all want to know your business plan if you're already in business they want to know that you're profitable but if you just start in a business they want to know the feasibility of you being profitable how feasible your business is and that you make it in that business plan where you project everything so okay so we have the business plan. Look, we're going perfect to this perfect company we are creating, right? We have our business plan. We selected the entity. We have an entity. We have this fabulous S corporation with this really catchy name. We have our logo, our web page, our product, right? And then what? What is the next, next most important aspect? To have that perfect company. Do you know, Nestor? You already have the money? I, yeah, yes. I have my business plan, number one. Then I have my entity of choice. Now I have my money. I have my capital, my working capital. Accounting? How do you know? You're reading it. <laughs> okay. Now, why do I say accounting? Well, a lot of people a lot of people a lot of companies are set up in the united states every year actually actually not even every year every day thousands and thousands of companies are set up incorporated if you read the statistic of state state corporation commissions in every jurisdiction you're going to see that thousands of companies are set up in the united states on a daily basis i think we have a comment you have a comment psychology of the leader is the next step and a very good accountant. <laughs> psychology of the leader is the next step. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> and a very good accountant. I agree with you, Jorge Cordero. Uh, you need psychology of the leader. Yeah, when you have a company, I mean, I am trying to do a lot of most of the uh, objective uh, aspects of building this perfect company. But you have to have if, if, any company, any entity, a, a, a country, any, any entity will need a leader. And the leader has to have this emotional intelligence. It's not only enough to have a high IQ anymore. You have to have this emotional intelligence. So when he's talking, I think, and correct me if that's not what you meant, when he's talking about the psychology of the leader, I think it's very important because as the owner of a business, myself being an owner, a business owner for so many years, I feel that we need to have that mental um, mental strength and to have that capacity to be empathic and to understand people. You're dealing with employees, you're dealing with different people, different talents. And we could do another show just talking about that because sometimes as an employer of course I learned all this by trial and error but as an employer you want you expect people to do what you do and you expect employees to maybe be mind readers you know so you have to as part of that plan and as part of you running your company be a prepare psychologically emotionally to deal with different temperaments and different levels of intelligence and preparation. You have to be patient. You almost have to be like a parent in repeating and not letting people stray from your vision and making sure people are rewarded and feel appreciated because no, even though we think people work for money, there's more than that. Not everybody works for money. You feel that you are make that you are giving something, that you're making a difference, that you are part of a bigger something. 
that is what makes people um, feel that they belong to a certain environment. So that, that, is, that is part of that. So going that, Jorge Cordero also says, a very good accountant. Yes, accounting is the reason, the lack of good accounting is the main reason how people fail in business. When I was going back to my, uh, the beginning of what I was talking in this point, I wanted to say that thousands of companies are set up in the United States every day and out of those thousands, I don't know the statistic um, from the top of my head, but let's say for the sake of the example that are 10,000 com 10, companies being set up every day. Out of those 10,000 companies, 90% of those do not survive the first year. So there's only left a 10%. And of that 10% left, there's another 90% of that 10% that do not survive five years. And in my experience, because I have set up business for a lot of people in my life, uh, during my career, I've noticed that what kill companies is bad accounting, bad taxes. Okay, so this, those two aspects can kill your business. Why is accounting important? Impor accounting is important because I have made projections, right? When I did my business plan and I have a budget and I have um, everything that I have when I started my perfect company with my perfect business plan. And then I don't have an accounting. An accounting will tell me, uh, by the way, accounting is not the same as taxes. Taxes are different, taxes are law, accounting is accounting. So you need to have good accounting systems because that's how you're going to follow what's going on in your company. How do you know if you're being profitable? How do you know where to cut off expenses if you are not following closely your money in and money out? The accounting will provide you that diagnostic that a business person needs maybe every three months or every month so you can know where you're standing and you can decide even if, if you should even be in business because if you are funding a company from your own money and the company is not being profitable then why be in business um, so you can have losses you know at the beginning because not all business are profitable the first year and I don't mean that I don't mean to discourage anybody as a matter of fact I think people like I said at the beginning have to have thick skin and strength to be an entrepreneur but you gotta be objective and you gotta have the accounting system you at the beginning if you're not able to afford to pay an accountant then find something there's a lot of stuff online there's mint this QuickBooks for self-employed, this um, uh, Zero. There are a lot of um, different softwares that can do it in an Excel sheet, you know. <laughs> I don't care if you do it in, in, in a book and you just put what's, uh, what's coming in, what's getting out, and the, the concept of category, but you have to have an accounting system. You also have to make sure the accounting company that you're hiring to do your your to manage your business, I mean, this is your livelihood. Is somebody reputable? Is somebody honest? Is somebody that has been in business for a long time? Remember what I told you before, this is the era of the informatic. We have access to so much information that we shouldn't make mistakes choosing somebody, you know? You should choose a person that maybe has been highly recommended to you or somebody who has a good reputation, has been in business for a long time. I mean, somebody that you know is going to be there for you to help you, uh, to help you run your company. Because when you have a good accounting, you are going to be able to examine if your business plan is accurate to make adjustment, to tweak and think, is my, is my company profitable? Where should I make adjustments? Should I cut in this? You know, you know when, when big companies, hotels, start laying off people, why do you think they do that? Because they have projections and they have a budget and they see, okay, this is a slow season. Unfortunately, we had to lay off people because we had to cut expenses here so we can, so we can save 
the bottom line. In big corporate America company, that's what they are looking at because they are uh, the shareholders, their board of directors that they had to give answers to and they had to keep that bottom line, okay? Uh, they had to keep those profits coming, otherwise, you know, otherwise the business will fail. The business will not succeed, will not uh, endure or exist. So accounting is very important so you can follow with your accounting your projections. And then once you have your accounting and you have your profit and loss, then you need the most important part. I don't know why I have it for last. I should have that first. I was doing this sequence, okay? Because you cannot do taxes until you have income. So for your company to survive, you need to have a good tax attorney, the best tax attorney in town, right here. No. You need to have somebody who is competent in taxes help you with your taxes. Sometimes you think you're saving money because you want to do it yourself, and unfortunately that is not the case. Taxes are the most important thing because taxes are law, they're not accounting, so not all accountants will be able to help you with your taxes. It's a misconception out there. Accountants are trained in accountancy. Taxes are law. And then you need somebody who is familiarized with the law, especially now that the regulations and laws have changed. You need to have somebody competent. And taxes are super important because the way you file your taxes or your tax structure will determine a lot of things. When you save money in taxes, it's money that you're putting in your pocket. So saving money in taxes is important, but it's important that you do it legally. It's important that you're compliant because when you don't find, let's say you are this company and you have the, the capital and you have the business plan and you have the accounting, but you don't make time for your taxes, then you don't do your taxes. Guess what? The IRS will file the taxes for you. It's called statutory filing. And it's going to assess the taxes at the highest rate possible because they're not going to give you a break. So you have to be on top of the this important aspect or the most important aspect and the aspect that in my experience kills companies because if you don't have um, your taxes done properly it can it can really hurt your finances in general it, it can really hurt your life because IRS can put liens on your property you can be assessed not only um, monetary penalties you can only be assessed corporate penalties as you know prison, if you commit fraud, if you don't declare all your income, if there's under-reporting, etc. So having your taxes, um, being compliant with the taxes, having it done correctly on time to avoid penalties, having your accounting and you have your profit and loss, so you look at your taxes every three months and you say, I'm having a profit, let me pay the taxes. Because if you pay them gradually it doesn't hurt as much as at the end of the year I tell you you have to pay $30,000. If you have divided those $30,000 and you pay it monthly and you pay it as you go because the United States tax system is an as pay as you go system. So look at your accounting and take care of your taxes and you will have this perfect company survive is what you want. Survive and endure and be something you can pass through generations. Have this company that is built to last, have to have all these steps and take care of all of these aspects and more, but we're just giving you uh, roughly the most important ones. So I think it's past the time. Is it already happened now? No way. Okay. So it's time for me to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope it was um, helpful. And if you have any questions, you can always contact us and we will be glad to assist you. If you need any assistance in setting up your business, we're here. We can help you. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Remember, eat fruits and vegetables, meditate and pray, or pray and meditate. Uh, spend time with your family and the people you love. Tell the people you love that you love them because you don't know how long we're going to be here. I love you all. It's been a pleasure. Namaste.